Hi, and today I made some progress on making some potting soil. You see this stuff? Look at this. Really good, right? So to explain the process of making it, I have used some, simply some um, good rich compost from my neighbor, some perlite, and some Epsom salt. So the perlite adds some good drainage to it, and the Epsom salt some fertilizer, along with a nice fertile compost. Amen. Amen. So, um, this is our germination station. So you can see, um, now we're doing labeling. Previously we didn't. So here is some Cherokee purple tomatoes. We planted these, um, a couple days ago, like three, um, well, it's the fifth now, March 28th, um, three, eight days ago, these toms were planted. Here's the cucumbers planted yesterday. You see, because we're finally not doing dates. And here's the basil, hydroponic cup. So um, it has a wick that transports the water from there to the basil to make sure it has perfect water. So these are our cucumbers and squash. So this one I did. So I used some of that soil I just showed you pretty this way. So one dad did. So he just took the raw compost and put it in, in the cups and I put the seeds in. So we could compare and contrast how each does just raw compost and um, filtered potting soil. Same seed though, right? This is squash, this is cucumber. Okay, very good. Praise the Lord. That raw compost that um, we got from Mr. Ray, our neighbor, and he's been gardening there for over 40 years. So this stuff is really, really good. This is better than miracle Grow, in my opinion. Um, it's got a lot of pine straw in it, but that's okay. That stuff breaks down as well. Now here is, um, these plants were all raised. These, all, these are all tomatoes, except for these are peppers right here. Um, and then uh, uh, obviously an aloe. Um, all these plants with all these tomatoes were uh, germinated inside using this process that Noah showed you. And they're finally hardened off by spring and ready to grow. This is experimental uh, because the heat is gonna re uh, capture on those bricks. And it's gonna make it really, really rich and high. Real, really, really high. So we got mulch and we got good soil, proper drainage. Here, with this plant right here, you see that it's sitting in water. That one you're not gonna have to water, you just water the, 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 the tray and then you um, it'll grow on its own. Here's our trellis. Trellis, is a, this is the second season using the trellis system. And it, again, these are plants that we grew from seed. Uh, in the winter time, in, indoors with the greenhouse. And now, very nice and healthy. And there's our neighbor's yard. This is the rest of our of our of our, of our uh, mountain of uh, um, what was it? Wood chips. Wood chips. That's right. It, it, when we first got it, it came all the way out to here, and it was about about that high. That's what's left of it. This is our second chip dump. Here's our garlic. It'll be ready to um, harvest in June. We planted this last November. All this garlic. About 108. Yeah, 108. These are our uh, third generation. That means it came from the store, and then it, it, and then we um, we planted it, and then um, we harvested it, and then we replanted what we harvested. That's this right here. So this is actually third generation away from store. This is um, uh, from store. So we basically buy cl clove of garlic, break it up into uh, little, little cloves, and boom, there you go. And then here, you got onions that are just about ready to pull out. Onions and some some garlic just about ready here we got strawberries show him show this so um let me take over ready to zoom in because here look at this guy new strawberries coming wow <laughs> so what are these red rocks well hopefully you thought they were strawberries because you want the birds to eat that <laughs> so i took some rocks from our creek over there I painted them red with some paint and I set them out so just in case birds come and want some strawberries, they're going to peck at the rocks and they say, oh, those rocks don't taste good. And then they're not going to come back for the actual strawberry. Tell, tell, tell us about this. So 
This is our, what we call the chip bed. Mm -hmm. This is a mound of chips here. We put soil on top of this, actually. What is this? I can walk inside the chip bed. Wow. Originally, this was a whole pile of chips from that chip bed that we showed you earlier. Now, with some improvisation, we dug a tunnel through it, if you would, so that I can walk and touch all sides of it so I don't have to walk over any plants. So it's essentially a raised bed, right? Yes, it is. But it's made out of, out of, uh, out of gr uh, basically ground up trees. Yes, wood chips. Which is good for... Soil drainage. It's also mulch. Yeah. They call it in the soil. That's right. So we have fertile soil. Here we have a lettuce plant. It's a hot rock. Over here, we have some cucumbers. They aren't doing the happiest right now. I believe they suffered some frost damage from planting real early. But they'll come back up. Maybe. Okay, I can film this. Okay. And we, we uh, have breakfast and dinner over to our glass over there. So we like to look at, at our garden and our birds, how we eat. And so this is uh, Stellas 2. Uh, it gets a lot of sun as well. Not as much as, as the other ones. Uh, but this has been a, a successful spot in the past to grow. So, um, more and more tomatoes, and then more compost in, various phases of decomposition. And then we can show me the roots. Here we have what I call CT, the chicken example. Favorite pick of, of the day from the roof. He loves getting picked up. So, as you can see, I keep my hands on them. Look what I'm doing. I'm not going to pick them up yet. I don't want them to freak out. So when I do this, he's not afraid at all. Now he does get freaked out by numbers. So here, he's Ruru. Hi. <laughs> so I like to pick him up a lot. And you might not be able to get inside here. But inside here, over there, there's two little hens. One here is called Martha. She just walks around being Martha Burr. And the other one's Mary. Sitting on top of wads of eggs. <laughs> I don't know. I get you. See the one in the back there. She's she's sitting on her eggs. Mhm. Mm she's keeping them warm. They're gonna pretty soon in a couple days. We're gonna have some babies. Let's get out of here. All right. Praise Lord. Praise Lord. <laughs> so here you see we're sectioning off with some of our more multi-purpose wood chips, mulch essentially. So here we have some mint from two seasons ago. It's, we felt like it died off, but guess what? The Lord does wondrous things. It came back, all right? Here's some cabbage. So essentially the process is we go to the store and we buy a head of cabbage. We eat the cabbage, but there's, the, there's that core left. What we do with that core is we plant it in the ground. And that core is essentially the cabbage's seed. So then it can reproduce and create a cabbage plant. This is a baby plant planted about a week ago. Here is a more mature, um, we planted this years ago. That's why it was originally over there when that was all broken up. Then it went to there, where the chicken coop now is. And here we have it now. This is another seed process. This is where you actually get the seed. It's from bolting. As you can see, this never turned into a head of cabbage, unfortunately. But we left it to bolt. These flowers pollinate. And they create these little pods, which when they dry out, they become cabbage seeds. Mm -hmm. And those little leaves on there are actually really tasty. You can break them off and put them in a, in a salad. Tasty. I do it all the time. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.